Player ratings then. Aston Villa 4, Everton 0. Um, yeah. Have I calmed down slightly over the last 15 minutes? Probably not. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, yeah. A truly terrifying performance for, for many reasons, really terrifying based upon the performance of the players on the pitch, players hiding, players making ridiculous mistakes, forward players not being involved in the game, terrifying in terms of the, the decisions made by the manager to persistently keep playing somebody that very clearly isn't good enough, to not make substitutions when needed, uh, terrifying in terms of the um, accountability and responsibility of the people at the top of the football club, most of whom are only there on a temporary basis, and terrifying in terms to what you actually think, um, you know, when you actually think about the future of this football club and the very near future of this football club. Um, Aston Villa are a good side. And there will be many teams that turn up to Villa Park this season and are disappointed by the outcome of their performance. Um, but that today was absolutely abysmal. Anyway, let's get straight into it because I've just done a 20 minute instant match reaction where basically I don't know what I said in it. It was that emotionally fueled, it was that raw. I couldn't tell you what I said in it, so we're just going to jump straight into the player ratings. Uh, if you don't know what this show is about, we give every player a rating between 1 and 10, 1 being absolutely abysmal, 10 being unbelievable. Spoiler, nobody's getting a 10, um, and we have a little bit of a conversation about their individual performances. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Jordan Pickford, um, <clears throat> I'm going to give him a 4 today. Again, goals-wise... Don't think he could have done much for the first goal, for the third goal, for the fourth goal. Um, second goal, obviously, being the penalty, it was his fault directly. Um, I'm not sure that there's much contact there, I'll be perfectly honest. Andre Onana come out last week and nearly decapitated a Wolves player. And because he plays for Manchester United, he was allowed to get away with it. I'm not quite sure there was a lot of contact in this and I'm pretty positive that if it was certain other teams that this had to happen to they wouldn't have been giving a penalty away uh, however if you run out like that and you throw yourself at the ball and you don't make any connection to the ball then you always run the risk of a penalty being give away, given away and it's silly and Jordan should know better than that and you know uh, again I, I'm not blaming him for costing us the game but the moment it went to 2-0 it was game over um you know, James Sarkowski himself said, we capitulated. Well, that's great, isn't it? That's great. Come out in an interview after it and go, we capitulated. Brilliant. Nice one for that. That's great. But yeah, again, you expect a little bit better from Jordan and, and, and you expect him to be a little bit calmer in that situation. So yeah, uh, Nathan Patterson, going to give him a two. Again, just awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, ripped to bits down that right-hand side numerous times. Positionally, was absolutely everywhere. Uh, I think he was better than last week, but not much better. I think he formed part of a defence that were absolutely horrendous. Um, and, yeah, the sooner we get Seamus Coleman back fit and available for, for you know in this team, the better. Because we need his experience, we need his quality, and, and we quite frankly need his uh, presence in this team. We just do. It's as simple as that. So, yeah, um, poor today from Patterson. Poor Michael Keane. Michael Keane, Michael Keane, Michael Keane. One. Um, some people might think I'm being harsh with that. Some people don't think he's a fault for the first goal because James Garner leaves his man. Yeah, okay, but... John McGinn walks in front of Michael Keane and Michael Keane doesn't walk towards him knowing that he's on his own. Third goal, completely may as well not be there. Fourth goal, okay, Ashley Young gives him a terrible, terrible throw, but once again, he's not on his toes and he's not quick enough to, to react to that. A lot of times, that ball gets cleared, the centre-half has a go at the, the full-back, the full-back apologises and you move on. Never the case with Everton. Um, and beyond having a go at Michael Keane, and beyond it, Michael Keane, now for every Michael Keane mistake, it's a Sean Dyche mistake, in my opinion. Now, I'm not sitting here blaming Michael Keane for the first goal or the third goal or the fourth. I'm blaming Sean Dyche. Michael Keane should not be in this team. Michael Keane was taking, taken out of this team for the most important four games of our season last season by this manager because he was deemed not good enough after forming part of a defence that conceded 20 goals in 10 games prior to that. He was taken out because he was deemed not good enough. 
He all of a sudden now is back in this team, meaning he must now be deemed good enough. But what has changed? Where does the improvement come from? So I'm done having a go at Michael Keane. I'm done blaming Michael Keane. I'm done saying Michael Keane's terrible. Michael Keane this, Michael Keane that. Sean Dyche is terrible for starting Michael Keane. And I will remain with that opinion until the day that he leaves his stubbornness behind, leaves his friendship behind and says, do you know what? I've just got to do what's best for Everton Football Club and what's not what's best for my relationships. So there you go. Uh, Tarkowski next to him. Three. Don't think he was much better. Um... All over the place defensively, we were all over the place all day. You know, he is meant to be a leader. He is meant to be the you know the, the the player with that leadership, the player with that you know that ability to keep the team together, to not let the team fall to bits. And he comes out himself in his interview and says, "Oh well, we capitulated today." Well, yeah, and 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 partly you're a fault for that because you're supposed to be there making sure that that doesn't happen. So, yeah, uh, he's getting a. What did I say? A two? A three? A two? He can have a two. Ashley Young, one. Uh, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible performance. I fall for the first goal. Uh, massively, I fall for the first goal. I fall for the fourth goal. Massively. Um, just a terrible performance. You know, it, it could be argued that he um, was wearing an Aston Villa shirt today. You know, he got a big reception from them and it looked like he went, Do you know what? I actually really like these and I want these to do well. Obviously, that wasn't the case. I'm not saying he, he purposely was awful, but he was terrible today. Absolutely terrible. Uh, Garner Gay, two. Didn't see him. Disappeared. Come off at half-time. First half, he was absolutely horrendous. Got himself a yellow card. Um, our midfield today as a whole was absolutely shocking. Absolutely shocking. Um, they hide. When things are tough and when things aren't going their way and when times are hard, they hide. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be involved. They don't want to, you know, influence a game. They don't want to get involved. They don't want to uh, try and pull things together. They hide. And you can't afford to have that. Especially not three players that do that. Garner, like I said, terrible today. Onana, one, awful, awful. Must have touched the ball less than 10 times. Had no impact on the game, no effect on the game. He was horrendous. And I can't even sit here and talk for more than 30 seconds about him because he didn't do anything. I done more sat on the fucking couch watching it on the telly than he did on the pitch today. Getting a one. Decore is getting a three. I thought he was a bit involved in the opening 20 minutes, but as soon as we ran a goal down, he was, he was absent as well. Absolutely absent as well. Uh, Awobi, give him a three as well. Don't think he was massively involved. Obviously, come off with a hamstring injury, wishing him the, a very speedy recovery. Um, but yeah, don't think he was massively involved when he was on the pitch. Don't think he was particularly influential. Um, yeah, getting a three. Garner, I'm going to give him a five. I think he was probably the best on the pitch, if I'm being honest with you. Um, again, I fall for the first goal, but positionally he's being played out of position and the manager doesn't seem to have a clue what to do with him um yeah like i said i thought on the ball he was the best player in, in an everton shirt um again a couple of good cross field balls a couple of good passes a couple of good bits of play was he great no not by any sense of the imagination but he was better than everybody else and and, and ultimately that's that's the um that is the position that we're in. That's the position that we're in. And then Dom Calvert-Lewin, two. And listen, I feel for Dom. Because in the same way as I think every time something goes wrong for Michael Keane, the manager should be blamed. I think every time something goes wrong for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, the board have to be blamed. You know, people are booing Dominic Calvert-Lewin off the pitch there because he's picked up another injury. His cheek's the size of a watermelon and his eyes closed. You can't carry on playing football like that. You know, if this board... If, well, do you know if we had a fucking board for the start? But do you know if the board that were here previously had done what they were supposed to do and run this football club correctly, we wouldn't need to rely on Dominic Carvalho. And do you know if Kevin Thelwell had gone out and bought a centre forward in the first six weeks of the transfer window? Do you know what I've just read? Do you know what I've just... I've just finished that instant match reaction that I've just done. I pressed stop recording. I went on to Twitter. Everton closing in on a £15 million deal for Che Adams. Right, OK. Why wasn't the deal for Che Adams closed three weeks ago? So Che Adams could play today and there wasn't that pressure on Dominic Calvert-Lewin and he wasn't booed off. And he's probably now sitting there feeling like absolute shite because he's being booed off for something that isn't his fault. Why, after that performance, are we closing the deal for Che Adams? Why hasn't that already been done? 
nonsense. Kevin Thelwell needs criticising, the manager needs criticising, the board needs criticising. It's nonsense. It's absolutely nonsense. Is it frustrating for Dom? Yes. Is it frustrating for us? Yes. I get it. I get the frustration. But it isn't his fault. It isn't his fault. And for every every time something goes wrong for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, we should be pointing our fingers at those people responsible. The recruitment team, the director of football and the board. It's as simple as that. Same way as when it goes wrong for Michael Keane, we should be pointing our fingers at the manager. But there you go. Uh, substitutes, Dan Juma, I'll give him a five as well. I thought he'd come on, ran round, had a shot, looked lively, got back, done some defensive work. Um, yeah, obviously had no impact on the game in terms of the outcome on the game or, or any real impact on Everton having any chance of getting back into it. But I thought he looked lively and he ran around and he had a go. Uh, Neil Mopai, three. Yeah, I'll be honest, I can't remember him touching the ball. Oh, he had a shot. He had a shot that was actually really well well taken. Corner comes in from Ashley Young, I think it was. Um, and it was a really well taken shot. And it was saved well by the goalkeeper. That was about it. So, he's had the shot on target. Uh, Lewis Dobbin, three, come on. Looked lively, took it past the player. Unfortunately, it, it went out of play. But other than that, didn't really do anything. And then Tyler on Yango. By that point, I was seething and um, trying my hardest to not look at the game. So, four. Did he touch the ball? I don't know. There you go. We're going to leave it there because I am absolutely fuming and I'm sick of Everton ruining me weekends, ruining me weeks, ruining me days. So I'm going to go have a roast dinner, watch the other game, watch a silly film later and just try and relax because I cannot be arsed worrying about these any longer than I already have. There you go. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Please check out the Instant Match Reaction as well. That would mean a massive amount to me. That is up on the channel now. Obviously, a game review will be up over the next couple of days where we'll delve straight into it. But like I said, for me, serious, serious change needs to be made now in terms of this squad. Otherwise, serious change will have to be made now in terms of the director of football, the manager and other people at the, job, at the football club. So there you go. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you later.